Oh my goodness, friends. I loved the last chapter, chapter eight. I did not know that there was gonna be a mummy inside that box. I thought maybe that was gonna happen. That was a prediction that I'd made, but I was still pretty surprised when I saw it in there. And then at the end of the chapter, I was feeling scared and worried because Jack and Annie can't find their way out. And then at the end, all of the lights went out and that made me feel pretty worried. How are you feeling about it? Do you think Jack and Annie are gonna be able to find their way out? I hope so. Let's see what happens. Today, we're gonna to make inferences. Inferences is where we think are where we think about what the characters know, so what we're reading, okay, what the characters are doing, what they're knowing, and we make an inference about what they're thinking. So based on what we've read, what are they thinking? Why are they feeling that way? Why are they doing that? So we're gonna make some inferences and predictions with our thinking voice. So I'm gonna go ahead and start reading so we can make those inferences. I'm gonna use my reading voice. Chapter nine is called Follow the Leader. It was pitch dark. Are there any lights? No. What happened? Asked Annie. I don't know, something weird, said Jack. We have to get out of here fast. Push against the door. Good idea, said Annie in a small voice. They felt their way through the darkness to the top of the stairs. Don't worry, everything's going to be okay, said Jack. He was trying to stay calm. Of course, said Annie. Why do you think Jack might be telling her it's gonna be okay? Why do you think he's telling her that? I think maybe Jack is saying that because he doesn't want Annie to feel scared and worried. He's trying to make her feel better so that they can find a way out and so she doesn't feel scared. He's a good brother to help her feel that way. Let's keep reading. They leaned against the wooden door and pushed. It wouldn't budge. They pushed harder. No use. Jack took a deep breath. It was getting harder to breathe and harder to stay calm. What can we do? Asked Annie. Just, just rest a moment, said Jack, panting. His heart was pounding as he was trying to see through the darkness. Maybe we should start down the hall, he said. Maybe we'll eventually come to an exit. He wasn't sure about that, but they had no choice. Come on, he said, feel the wall. Jack felt the stone wall as he climbed slowly down the stairs. Annie followed him. Jack started down the long hallway. It was impossible to see anything. Can they see things in there? No, why not? It's too dark. There's no light. It's a good idea that he's keeping his hand on the wall so he doesn't um, step on anything or bump into anything. But he kept going, taking one step at a time, making sure his hands were along the wall. He went around a corner. He came to some stairs and he went up. There was a door. He pushed against it and he pushed too. This door wouldn't budge either. Was it the same door they had started at? It was no use. They were trapped. Annie took his hand in the dark. She squeezed it. They stood together at the top of the stairs, listening to the silence. Meow. Who's there? Oh man, Jack whispered. Oh, he's back, said Annie. Who's back? Who's there to help them? Meow. Follow him, said Jack. He's going away from us. They started down the dark hallway, following the cat's meow. Hands against the wall, Jack and Annie stumbled through the darkness. Meow. Did you think that was how they were going to find their way out? They were going to follow the cat? That was a surprise to me. I didn't know they were going to see the cat again. They followed the sound all the way through the winding hallway, down, down, down. Around one corner, then another and another. 
Finally, they saw a light at the end of the tunnel. They rushed toward it out into the bright sunlight. <gasps> Yay, Annie shouted. But Jack was thinking. Let's think about what Jack was thinking. Annie, he said, how did we get out of that false passage? The cat, said Annie. But how could the cat do it? Asked Jack. Magic, said Annie. Jack frowned. But, <laughs> let's use our thinking voice for a second. So I read that Jack was wondering how the cat knew how to find its way out. And what did Annie say? She said the cat was magic and that's how it knew how to find its way out. What do you think? Based on what you know about the cat or what you know about finding your way out of a pyramid, do you think the cat's magic? How did the cat find its way out of the pyramid? Make an inference. Remember, an inference is just a guess. It's okay if you're right. It's okay if you're wrong. Use the clues that you know from the story from our reading to make a guess. How did the cat find its way out of the pyramid? Let's keep reading to find out. Look, said Annie. She pointed. The cat was bounding away over the sand. Thank you, called Annie. Thanks, Jack shouted at the cat. His black tail waved. Then he disappeared into the shimmering waves of heat. Jack looked toward the palm trees. At the top of one of the trees sat the tree house, like a bird's nest. <laughs> Time to go home, Jack said. He and Annie set off for the palm trees. It was a long, hot walk back to the tree house. At last, Annie grabbed the rope ladder, then Jack. Once they were inside the tree house, Jack reached for the book about Pennsylvania. Just then, he heard a rumbling sound. The same sound they had heard inside the pyramid. Look, Annie said, pointing out the window. Jack looked. A boat was beside the pyramid. It was gliding over the sand, like a boat sailing over the sea. Then it faded away into the distance. Was it just a mirage? Or was it the ghost queen finally on her way to the next life? Oh my goodness, I gotta use my thinking voice for a second. I usually don't see a boat going through the sand, but what I read was a boat going through the sand. Usually boats are in the water. That is so strange. What do you think is happening? Do you agree with um, maybe it being a mirage? Maybe they're just imagining it. They're just, the sun is making them see things. Or do you think the ghost queen is inside there and she's on her way to the next life? I think this might be an inference where we don't find out what's actually true. We just get to decide for ourselves what actually happened. Let's keep reading. Home, Jack, whispered Annie. <laughs> She's ready to go. Jack opened the Pennsylvania book. He pointed to the picture of Frog Creek. And what did he say? I wish we could go home, he said. The wind began to blow. The leaves began to shake. The wind blew harder, it whistled louder. The treehouse started to spin. It spun faster and faster, then everything was still, absolutely silent. Oh my goodness. I'm so glad Jack and Annie found their way out of the pyramid. I was starting to get a little bit worried for them. I thought it was really important in this chapter when they found the cat that led them out of the pyramid because I was starting to feel worried that Jack and Annie weren't gonna be able to find their way out. It was like a maze and they couldn't see anything, but they followed the cat and we made some inferences. How do you think the cat found its way out? Luckily, the cat led them out of the pyramid and they found the tree house. You could definitely also think it's important that that boat was going across the sand. Do you think Queen Hutepi was in that boat? 
maybe we get to make some inferences. Great listening, friends, and then you get to write what you think was important in this chapter next.